Hi, my name is Ross Miller and welcome to the Speedwell Garage, Parkton's friendliest Studebaker Packard workshop. So uh, a question that comes up very often, I've noticed it on the Packard Club forums and the Studebaker forums and other places, is how to install a distributor and get the timing right so that the car starts the first time without a lot of trial and error. So that's what we're going to do today. So this is uh, a distributor from a 1953 Packard Straight 8. It's a Delco Remy distributor and it's typical of anything that was used in pretty much any car in the 50s all the way up through the late 60s. So I just want to show you a couple things about that. This, uh, this rotor here on the top, this was a Delco feature. It had a resistor in it to uh, keep radio interference at a minimum. These are very problematic. Keep an eye on that. Um, sometimes the resistor will blow, blow out, fall out, crumble out and suddenly your car will stop on the side of the road. I don't use these in my own cars anymore. You can replace it with a rotor from a Pontiac, which did not use the resistor, fit right in. Those just come right off? Yeah, they just pull right off. Okay. Okay, coming in a little closer here. These are the points, and I've taken, uh, taken the time to clean up the points because uh, on distributors that have sat for a long time or cars that have sat for a long time, uh, the points will no longer conduct electricity because uh, oxide will build up on the surface of the points. So I've taken a minute to clean those up so and check that there's actually continuity from this terminal on the side to ground. I, li I like to check my uh, distributors uh, with a multimeter. I just set it to the continuity setting so that it beeps when there's continuity. Okay. And, I didn't uh, know they did that. They, oh, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful feature. It saves a lot of trouble. And uh, put him there. And right now the points are closed, so the unit's beeping. And if I turn it just a little bit till the points open, it'll stop beeping because there's no longer continuity. Right. So this is basically just serving as a switch to turn the co ignition coil on and off really right. fast. How's it go? <laughs> the, the principle you need to know about distributors and, and ignition timing is that the spark plug fires at the instant that the points open. When the points open, the magnetic field in the coil collapses and that causes the spark to jump. So you need to have the points clean, set properly per the book. This is no surprise to anybody. Um, so that when the, points open, when the points are closed, current passes through the coil. As soon as the points open, the current stops passing through the coil magnetic field collapses boop, and you get the spark. So let's see how to set this up to uh, put it in a car. Okay, here we go. So what we have here, this is a, uh, a 1953 Packard chassis came out from underneath of a parts car. Um, I have since found out that the engine will run, which was a surprise. In fact, it may even have been rebuilt. Uh, I don't know too much about this engine yet, but this is typical of any 1950s chassis, 1950s car. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. First of all, you need to know um, what the timing is for your car. You can look it up in the motor's manual, you can look it up in the shop manual. I know on a Packard it's seven degrees before top dead center. And I've taken the time to clean off the marks here, which are on the vibration damper. So I'm just going to take my white pen and put a mark right there at seven degrees before. Okay, and then over here there's a little pointer that you can see down through here. When that white mark that I just made lines up with that pointer, that's when cylinder number one should fire. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. <coughs> All right, the question is, because this is a four-stroke engine, number one piston goes up twice, only fires once. So you have to get everything into the right position to set it 
to the uh, before you can put the distributor in. Ooh. And the question arises: How do we know? How do we know, Joseph? How do we know that? <laughs> how do we know? <laughs> how do we know that cylinder number one is on the compression stroke? Well, I'm going to show you a nice, simple method here. All right. Get my stop. <laughs> I guess you just listen for the inhale? <laughs> Something like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. We're going to take out spark plug number one here so we can tell what's going on. Oops. And that's, well, I will go get the right socket. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Cut. Cut. So, somewhere since yesterday, the spark plugs. Oh, it's right, it's right here. Gosh, what an idiot. <laughs> never mind. I was wondering what that was. I yeah. was going to say something, but yeah, never well, mind. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had a lot of that this week. I don't know what's the problem. Must be the rust oil anyway, primer. Anyway, so three, two, one. <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> oh, goodness. So we're going to take out spark plug number one so we can tell whether it's on the compression stroke or not. So when it's on the compression stroke, the distributor should be open? The, the, yes. Okay. The, we want number one to fire at the end of its compression stroke, and we want to set the distributor so the point's just open at the right time. Wow. So I have to show you something really cool. <laughs> okay. This, this is one of, my, one of my most favorite possessions. This is a tool that was made by a very dear friend of mine who's long since gone now, but he made this back in the 1940s, and it's a whistle made what? from a spark plug. Uh -huh. Yeah, huh? And his whole purpose in life is to tell you when number one is coming up on the compression stroke. So you're listening for the exhale. You, you listen for it to exhale. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> And you might say, hey, but I don't have a whistle. Well, you could make one. Uh, or you can do it the really cheap and easy way is that you can just lay a penny over the spark plug hole. I don't think she'd like that. <laughs> oh, you mean a penny the coin, okay. <laughs> Get my wrench here. <clears throat> I may have to turn this a couple times to get... <laughs> so should I be filming the penny? Um, see, it's already there. I'm going to turn it back. Okay. So it... Oh! Let me turn it back. All right. Okay, now. <laughs> Three, two, one. Three, two, one. <clears throat> It's very easy to tell when cylinder number one's on the compression stroke, you wait for the penny to rise up. That means the air is being compressed in the cylinder. So you wait until you see the penny come. Turn this over. You can bump the engine with the starter. Oh, oh I think we're almost there. Not yet. There we go. There you go. All right. And it's a little hard to see here, but the uh, the timing mark is coming around to the pointer. You want to come over, maybe, yep. and I'll bring the timing mark up to the pointer. You can see the timing, but that means we're on the compression stroke. So now we just want to turn our engine over until the timing marks line up. There, uh, a little too far. There we go. Seven degrees before we're top dead center. Now we can put our spark plug back in. So top dead center is when the piston uh, is all the way up. Right. So on on pretty much well yeah every engine they uh, fire the plugs before slightly before top dead center. That's to give the uh, give the fire a chance to get burning before uh, before the power stroke 
okay. gets underway. And the faster the engine's running, the sooner you have to light the fire to get everything ready. So that's why distributors have centrifugal advances and vacuum advances to uh, help the engine adjust to load and speed to set the fire going at the right time. All right. What were you turning in order to turn the engine? Was it? I was <clears throat> I was just using the uh, bolt on the front of the crankshaft here because okay. here in the naked engine it's very easy uh, but you can do it by bumping it over with the starter. All right. In order to set your distributor properly you need to know which direction it turns. So hopefully you, you've noticed that already when you've been working on your car or you can just stick it in the in the engine real quick and make sure that you know which way it normally turns. I happen to know that all these Packard straight eights the distributor turns counterclockwise while the engine's running and that's actually a very useful piece of information. So it's very easy to put the thing in. It just sticks in the hole. Not uh, on some V8 engines, a lot of other engines, they'll have a gear on it and you can install it in many different positions uh, on these Packards. The drive is like a screwdriver drive and so it will only go into two positions. And I know that <clears throat> normally Packards are installed when everything is correct the rotor will be at about, the distributor will be with the vacuum chamber pointing straight forward and the rotor will be at approximately a 730 position. That can be off a little bit depending on who installed the oil pump and whether they installed <laughs> the oil pump correctly. But with this method we can, we can figure all that out anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in. <clears throat> so we know that we have Number one's on the top of its compression stroke. We know that it's at the ignition point. So I can put this baby in here. There we go. And you notice I can, I can install it wrong with the rotor pointed up, or I can pull it back out, turn it with the rotor right. Okay. Okay. Now, how do we set the uh, position of the distributor accurately. Okay, it's actually not too easy. Not too <laughs> cut. Uh -huh. It's actually no, not, psych. not that difficult. <clears throat> so once you've got your rotor, got your distributor in place and the rotor roughly in the direction where you think it's supposed to be, um, I want you to turn your whole distributor in the direction that the rotor turns. So I'm going to turn this all the way down here. Let's get it way, way out of the way. So now, I'm going to take my... And you can do that only because it's installed properly right now. Yes, okay. you, you, want to, you want to get the, your basic orientation right. And now, timing is adjusted. The actual engine time is adjusted by where the distributor is relative to the shaft. Okay. And so I'm going to show you a nice way to the do The shaft that. being what we just the threw inside the hole. Okay. Yeah, it's just stuck inside the hole. Okay. So I'm going to turn this back to the... Uh, continuity. Let it sit here. And I'm going to check for continuity. I can see right now it should have continuity. I don't know if you can hear that beeping, but it's yep. beeping with the wind blowing in the background. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the distributor. Whoop. Oh, here we go. Okay, it's beeping. I'm going to turn the distributor in the away from the direction it normally turns so this time I'm going to turn the distributor clockwise until I hear it just stop beeping which is right there. Okay. okay, that means that the points have just opened that will cause, when everything's all hooked up, that will cause the ignition coil to deliver spark at just that instant. Oh, okay. So now, I'm just going to lock this down so it doesn't rotate any further. Okay. <clears throat> now it can be, depending on your engine and who's been there and working and whatnot, that you'll find uh, the 
on this engine when I first got it out of the parts car that the spark plug wires were all off and you don't know where to put them. <laughs> so, but we do know where to put them because now we know that where this rotor is pointed, that has to be cylinder number one. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cap on. Notice that that's uh, pointing there about the 730 position. My cap on, which is indexed to the distributor. It will only go in one position. Oops. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now she's good. All right. So our rotor was pointing there, and we know that the engine, when the engine's running, the distributor is turning counterclockwise so you can look up the firing order for your engine in the shop manual or in a motors manual or something like that and then you just install your spark plug wires in the in the firing order going around in the direction that the distributor turns so oh, okay i know as we talked about before packard distributors turn counterclockwise and i know that the firing order for Packard straight is straight eight is one six two five eight three seven four. Got that one six two five eight three seven four. <laughs> for a good time call. For a good time call. <laughs> if it's an inline six, it's going to be one five three six two four. If it's a Buick, it's going to be different. You got to look it up. If it's going to be some other car, you have to look four cylinders. I'd have never memorized. But anyway, the idea is that put your spark plug wires around in order and it just so happens I did that yesterday so these are already in order one six two five eight three seven four yeah we're just about ready to try this thing out so I'm gonna put my coil wire back in into the ignition coil into the ignition coil because that had fallen out and I'm gonna hook up the, uh, the lead from the coil to the side of the distributor that's this provides the ground for the coil, as we talked about. Okay. All right. We're ready to try it. So uh, today, this is our ignition key. We just need to apply a little bit of electricity to the coil. So I'm going to take some off of here. The battery cable goes to the starter. And put it onto the coil here. Now, just do this with a wire, but I have this really cool starter switch, and we'll just see what happens. And nothing! I should have said I knew it would be! I <laughs> Take two. Take two. I mean, the other day, no, no joke, man. It, like, like you just drove the car to the store. You came out of the store, got in, and started it. Oh wow! Uh, but today, we, we got troubles here. So much fun, should we do it again? Yes. Because <laughs> I just love this. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to turn the ignition on, hit the starter button, give it a little gas here. Oh. So it looks like our distributor installation was a success. Agree. That's gorgeous. And I, I'm tickled to death with this engine because I had no idea if it was good, bad, or indifferent. It seems good. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this baby. I don't hear any knocks. I don't hear... No, there's no funny noises at all. I love straight eights. It's gorgeous. 
gorgeous. It, it sounds gorgeous. better than a Mustang, I'll say it. <laughs> so, here we go. All right. <laughs> and done. That's a wrap. People say pennies aren't good for anything. Yeah. <laughs> I use them all the time here. Great. And this is this is very accurate because I have no idea where the engine is in its cycle right now. So we just turn it until we hear the whistle. The white whistle right away. Wait, huh? <laughs> Go coming up on the compression stroke. Is that cool or what? That is pretty awesome. And then we just keep going until we get to the timing mark. Ta da! And it lowers in frequency when you get there. Yep. Nice. This this goes in the Ross Miller Museum afterwards. <laughs> Is that a copper washer? It is a copper washer, and there's a there's a specific reason why I did that. I, um, I think this head, the cylinder head, has been milled or to make it flat. It has gotten thinner, which puts the spark plugs very close to the valves. When I first looked at this engine, a couple of the spark plugs, the gap had been pushed shut. Ooh. So that's uh, they may never have had any happy success with running this engine when right. they tried it. That may be why the car was scrapped. Okay. Because they never decided to look at the spark plugs. Right, just gone. like, oh, that damn thing, oh, I can't spend any more money on it, I don't even want to think about it anymore. Now, you use copper because it's a softer metal? Uh, yeah, okay. it just spaces the plugs up. All right.